What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today we're going to be talking about aquarium heaters and specifically what to do if you find water inside of your aquarium heater. Does that mean the heater's junk? Does that mean it's broken? Does that mean you need to get a new one and replace it? Possibly not and that's what we're going to be talking about today. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I was working on this 55 gallon tank right here behind me with the new Red Devil Soleil and I was looking at the heater and I noticed that there's little water droplets inside of it. So I'll show you guys a clip of that here real quick. So if you guys take a look at this 55 gallon tank right here, if I come up close to this heater and zoom in on it a little bit, you can see how, let's see, right here, that silver sticker has got little bubbles on it, as well as there's little water droplets along all the top of that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're looking at is the water inside of a heater. So I saw that little bit of water in there and I know why it's in there, but I see a lot of people online talking about when they see something like this, they automatically assume the heater's broken and that they need to get a new one. And that may not be the case. So what we're gonna wanna do is we wanna make sure the heater is working properly. So you're gonna wanna check the temperature of your aquarium using either a thermometer or an infrared temperature gun something like that to make sure that the temperature of the aquarium is within the range that you want to keep it at. Most of my tanks I keep 78 to 80 degrees for tropical tanks so I know if the heat is below that that the heater is no longer functioning properly and we're gonna to have to replace it. But if the temperature is within range then we're going to want to remove the heater from the aquarium and visibly inspect it to make sure there's no damage. There are some fish that swim around really fast, really aggressive and rapidly, and could hit that and crack the glass. So unplug the heater, remove it from the aquarium, and visibly inspect the glass. Make sure there's no cracks or chips or pieces missing. That would be allowing water to go into that. Uh, if there are any chips or cracks, you're unfortunately going to have to replace that heater uh, for the safety of you and your fish to make sure that there's no electrical currents being released into the aquarium that could injure you or the fish. If there are no damages with the glass, the next thing we're going to want to look at is we're going to look at the plastic housing on the top of the heater. This is usually where the adjustment knob for temperature is on the heater. And we're going to want to see if that's loose or if there's a failed seal or something like that because if there is the water is actually going to start building up inside of the heater like you can see in this picture right here you can see that there's little water droplets in the heater and then at the very bottom of the heater down here you can actually see there's a little bit of water built up in the heater and that's what it's probably going to look like if you have a crack or a broken seal or something it's going to start accumulating water so if you have something like that happening you're going to want to replace the heater because the heating elements inside of this heater are actually getting submerged in the water and that's going to cause it to fail prematurely and could be dangerous to you or your fish so you're going to want to replace that heater. Now if you're only getting the little water droplets up in the upper part here that's different and chances are that's just condensation. So what is condensation? Condensation is when warm, humid air meets a cold surface. What's going to happen is the moisture in the air meets the cold surface and it condenses. And the water vapor actually gathers on the surface of the cold object and creates water droplets known as condensation. And the easiest example I can think of to show you guys would be if you pour a cold glass of water on a hot summer day and let it sit on the table for a little bit, your cup is going to start sweating and looking like this. And that is condensating water. So the hot air is coming in, meeting the glass, and it's building up on the glass and then running down. The water is condensing, condensation. So that can also happen in a reverse method with aquarium heaters. So should you be worried about condensation in an aquarium heater? In my opinion, no. And I'm aware that this is probably an unpopular opinion among many aquarists because water and electricity don't necessarily mix that great, right? Um, but the reason for this and the condensation happening in the heater is due to the humidity in the manufacturing environment. So if you're not working in a climate controlled area and you're just assembling an aquarium heater and it just happens to be, well, it's 85 degrees today with 100% humidity, when you put all of the components together and finally seal up the tube, right, on the aquarium heater, 
the warm, humid air is going to stay inside of that heater uh, pretty much for the rest of the heater's life, right? That air can't escape. There's no way for it to exchange. That's just going to be it. So when we purchase the heater, usually when we put it in the aquarium, the water is going to be cooler. So we turn the aquarium heater on. And what's going to happen is you've got the warm, humid air inside of the aquarium heater. You've got the cool water inside of the tank, right? So it's the opposite effect of when you have a cold glass of water sitting on a table on a hot day. You have a, uh, a hot tube inside of cold water, and what's going to happen is the humid air inside of that heater tube is going to condense on the inside and create condensation inside of the heater on the glass. And this is very common in the... Um, the lower cost heaters, the Aquions, the Tetras, the Eheims, right? Some of the lower end heaters like that. And I know people are going to call me out like Eheims not really that low quality. Um, but these heaters are manufactured as cheaply as they can so that way we can get them at a fair cost. If you were to go out and purchase a heater that costs over a hundred dollars, chances are those heaters are manufactured in a temperature controlled climate area and you're not going to have the condensation issues. So one other thing that I want to point out is that the manufacturers are aware of this. And if you look at this right here from the Aquion website about their heaters, you know, what should you do if you see water inside of your heater? And it is perfectly normal. And that's straight from Aquion. They're telling us that it's normal, right? So should you be worried about the water inside of your aquarium heater? In my opinion, no. Unless the glass is broken or the heater is actually letting water from the aquarium inside of it, the little droplets of condensation inside the aquarium heater are nothing to worry about. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching Trafish Aquatics. Links, as always, in the description down below. If you guys like the Red Devil t-shirt, go ahead and click the link in the description down below. Get yourself a Red Devil t-shirt, and I will see you guys in the next video.